The Snapmaker A250 was on Kickstarter a few years ago and it took the entire community by storm because it is supposed to be a CNC machine, a laser, a 3D printer, all in one and it was supposed to actually be good. So when I had the opportunity to take the Snapmaker A250T bring it into the studio and put some mileage on it, I jumped on it immediately. A bunch of the YouTubers that previously did a review on the Snapmaker had issues like bed wobble, they had fan noise issues, and a whole bunch of other issues, and so I will also cover that in this video. And in this particular case, I think that little T actually is important, and I think they made some significant improvements upon their previous model. At the time of this recording, the 250T is $900 on Snapmaker's website, and the 350T is $1,200 on Snapmaker's website. Now, if you want to add the enclosure that goes with the respective device, you're gonna have to add $400 to that number. So that goes to about $1,300 or about $1,600. If you guys think that you can go without the enclosure with this machine, you are wrong. This machine almost definitely requires the enclosure because with the laser, it creates a bunch of smoke and it's gonna set your fire alarms off. And with the CNC machine, you're gonna throw dust and bits everywhere. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes, this machine is incredible. I really, really like it. And as a matter of fact, it will be featured on the channel again here in the near future. But guys, this is a spicy potato because <laughs> I, you know, as I was filming this video, I kept going back and forth. Is this worth it? Is it not worth it? Is it worth it? And it is really, really, really going to be up to you and what your intentions with this machine are. So what you are going to first notice when you get your Snapmaker at home is the incredible build quality, the incredible care that Snapmaker has given to the shipping and packaging of your product. At the onset, you're going to have a very large package and when you open it up, you're going to be littered with individual boxes. And those individual boxes are very, very clearly and plainly labeled. Everything is an incredible unboxing experience. <laughs> the build experience has left a little to be desired, but the unboxing experience is without a doubt the best unboxing experience I have ever had with a 3D printer. When you're ready to dive into the assembly of your printer and of your enclosure, both of them are going to be very similar, you're given a very thick instruction manual step by step telling you how to put the printer together. Now, typically a 3D printer comes with a thick manual that is plain paper, it's not colored or anything. The Snapmaker is like an Ikea catalog. It is thick. It has beautiful HD color photos. The paper is thick. It just feels premium, kind of like the Snapmaker itself. On every step of the instruction manual, it tells you very clearly what components you're gonna need, what hardware you're gonna need. It's a very simple process, or so you might think. Now, without boring you with the details uh, that I have written on this paper, I did have a very big issue assembling both the printer and the enclosure. Was it me? Was it the instructions? I don't know. But I had a whole host of issues where I would assemble something and then four or five steps later, I would realize that I assembled it wrong and I had to go back and I had to do it all over again. For the low, low price of $1,000, I would think that the whole machine would come assembled. And I don't really quite understand why Snapmaker can't do that because I have multiple printers that you unbox the machine and it is fully assembled. All you have to do is essentially stick the hot end on, screw the bolt down, and then you're done and you're ready to print within five minutes. So the building had a lot to be desired. For this price point, I really honestly would expect the printer to come fully assembled or at least mostly assembled. If you can stress your way through the build of your Snapmaker and of your enclosure, there is a whole host of things that are just simply good and right and things that Snapmaker has done better than anyone else. Every single component on the Snapmaker is anodized aluminum. It feels premium, it looks premium, it's not gonna wear down, there's nothing shaky, there's nothing that rattles. The Snapmaker is really simply a tank of a machine. It's very, 
very high quality. I legitimately don't think there's a single piece of plastic anywhere within sight on this machine. I mean, if you take a look at the screen and the processing unit of the Snapmaker, it looks like an iPhone. It's a small square rectangular machine that when you tap it has real solid glass. It feels good to touch, it's responsive. The Snapmaker is a very, very well put together machine. The main hub for the X-axis, the Y-axis, the tool head, the heated bed, the screen, everything else has a location for USB. And personally, I tried to use the USB, but it was giving me a little bit of issues. And that doesn't matter because the Snapmaker is equipped with Wi-Fi. And if you use Luban, which is their software, the Wi-Fi is on another level of convenience. You connect the Snapmaker to Luban over Wi-Fi and then you simply send your files from Luban to the Snapmaker. You can do this one of two ways. You can either connect Luban to the Snapmaker and use the actual connection to send the files over and print from Luban or if you would like, you can simply use Luban to transfer the files, in which case you could turn your computer off and the Snapmaker would have downloaded the files and can print without Luban. If you opt to get the enclosure, it is very well designed for the most part. There are LEDs built into the enclosure and believe me, that is the best part about the entire machine. Once you plug the machine into the enclosure, it automatically recognizes it and it gives you the opportunity to automatically turn the LEDs on upon boot up of the machine. You can also use the built-in fan to push out any fumes. The enclosure comes pre-designed with cable management, so there's no cables in sight. It also has an acrylic that does not require you to wear goggles for safety whenever you're operating the laser. The one issue with the Snapmaker enclosure is that the doors on the front and the side do not work well. Now, when I first got my enclosure in the mail, the door was broken. Snapmaker thankfully sent me a replacement free of charge. Unfortunately, the doors do not operate smoothly and it's a total fight to get them to open and to close. Thankfully, the doors do exist and the doors on the front and the side are incredible when they're open. If you need to get a whole clear view, of the work surface, they're just simply fantastic. That side door is absolutely massive and having it there is just unparalleled in terms of access to the machine itself. Let me just say thank you to Snapmaker for sending this machine out to me to test and review for the channel. Normally I don't get to review and play with products like this, so while this has been very time consuming and stressful, I have significantly enjoyed getting to know this machine so I can share it with everyone on the internet. So now that we've covered some of the physical aspects of the Snapmaker, let's kind of migrate towards the software and the firmware side of things. So what better than to start with the screen? As I previously mentioned, the screen is incredible. It's a solid, nice piece. It has weight to it, it has heft to it. It has a solid glass interface, so when you touch it, it's not mushy, it just feels good to work with. Again, I mentioned that it's responsive, and it's responsive on a whole nother level. When you push the button, it just does what you tell it to do. So the screen on the Snapmaker does not just feel premium, it is premium to look at. It's a high pixel density display full of vibrant colors and a very, very custom user interface. Because the screen runs Android, it's very easy to get updates. So when Snapmaker has updates, they push them to the user and it's very simple to download. As a matter of fact, since I've owned the device, there have already been multiple updates for me to download. One of the bad things with the screen is the mount for it. The mount uses a magnet and it clamps directly into the Snapmaker. And when you push the screen from the bottom, it seems to work very well. But if you happen to push the screen from the top and you push a little bit too hard, the screen might dislodge from its mount and it's just a little clunky to work with. One thing that's pretty nice about the Snapmaker is that it has a menu for calibration. So whether you're in 3D printing mode or you're in laser mode, you can go to that calibration menu and you can access whatever is necessary. The issue, in my opinion, with the calibration menu, specifically for 3D printing, is that there's a whole host of calibration features that you get in Clipper firmware or Marlin firmware that are just completely and entirely left out 
The only thing you get in the calibration menu is an auto bed mesh and that's it. As I've previously mentioned, the Snapmaker can connect directly to Luban through the computer. Now the issue is when you connect it to Luban, the screen becomes completely and entirely useless. That makes no sense because if you want to be able to toggle the light, if you want to be able to toggle the fan, you simply just can't do that. And if you're using the laser, for instance, and you've started a print from Luban and then you've walked all the way over to your Snapmaker just to realize that you forgot to turn the light on and you can't see, you have to walk all the way back to the computer. Another thing that I simply found weird about the Snapmaker is that when you're in 3D printing mode and you want to start a print, well, you go and you click the print button and it has a loading bar and it loads and it loads and it loads for a very long time. I don't know what it's doing. It's pre-processing something, but it's weird and it doesn't exist on any other printer. And it's so bad that if you have a large print, something that might take up the whole build plate, it might take two or three minutes to pre-process this one 3D printing file. And you have to stand there. You have to stand there and wait until it's done because once it's done, you can click the print button. I wanna take a brief intermission to let you guys know that all of these videos I do on this channel are incredibly time consuming. This particular video, I've worked on it for three weeks in a row. That's not me making a pity call. It's just saying that these videos are very time consuming and I'm doing them for you. I'm doing them because I love to make them. With all that said, if you do enjoy this video, if it's helped you at all, a like and a subscribe would be very, very helpful. I am very excited to report that the 3D printing module is a very nice experience. I think that the flex plate on the Snapmaker is very thick. I think it's durable. I think it's gonna last a very long time. Now it's important to note that it is not a PEI sheet and it is smooth. There was no issues with build plate adhesion. There was an issue with too much adhesion, as a matter of fact. So I printed my first model on this build plate and it was so difficult to get off that it actually left discoloration. It left issues on the bottom of the 3D print. So I guess you can say there actually was an issue with the build plate adhesion. It was too much and that was with PLA. And that's so far the only thing that I have run through this machine because I just really haven't had time to run PETG or TPU or ABS through it yet. One good thing about the build plate is that it is magnetically adhered to the base and it is very strong. I have no concerns with that magnet coming off. Another couple good things to report about the 3D printing module is that I found that the part cooling fan was very quiet and I thought that it actually heated up very quickly as well. I did not time the heat up of the hot end, but if I were to compare it to one of my Ender 3s, it was probably two times as fast. For 3D printing, I felt that Luban was beautiful, it was clear, it was concise, and if you're a new 3D printing user, you're not gonna have any issues learning how to use the 3D printing module within Luban. That being said, I personally would not use Luban because it is simply not supported by the community. If you use something like Prusa Slicer or Cura, which are compatible with the Snapmaker, then you're gonna get the latest algorithms immediately when they come out. You're gonna have more community support. It's just going to be an overall better experience. So all of that being said, I did use Luban to slice a couple models and I had an issue with one of them. Now. I am working with Luban to correct the issue because they sliced the same model in their slicer and didn't have any issues. So I believe that might be due to my fault and an issue that I had. After the first model that I sliced, I used Cura to slice most of everything else. And then I talked with Snapmaker about the issue I had. They told me to try Luban again. I tried Luban again and I had pretty good luck. Directly out of the box, I believe the Snapmaker has very high quality prints and it appears to be calibrated directly out of the box as well. I printed a calibration cube and it was pretty clear that it was either calibrated from factory or had no reason to be calibrated from factory because it was almost dead accurate. Upon removal of one module and installing another module, you always have to recalibrate, no matter if it's a laser module being added or the 3D printing module being added, you will always have to recalibrate. And for the 3D printing module, if you put that on, that means you have to calibrate the bed mesh. 
if you opt to not calibrate the bed mesh, the Snapmaker realizes that you didn't calibrate the bed mesh. And when you go to start a 3D print, it asks you if you would like to calibrate the bed mesh. Another thing I noticed is that whenever you start a 3D print and you want to change the settings, whether it's the build plate or it's the hot end temperature or the speed or anything else, Snapmaker doesn't seem to register that right away and it has to heat up fully before anything happens. The reason that's a little unfortunate is because you want to make sure that the setting you applied takes effect and for some reason the Snapmaker automatically boots up to 70 degrees Celsius on the bed which regardless of whether that's what you told it to do that's what it always starts as. I believe the Snapmaker does that to increase bed adhesion but unfortunately when you go into Luban and you look at the first layer bed adhesion temperature is not 70. So I'm really not quite sure why this happens. I could probably go a little deeper into some of the small minute issues that I've noticed with the Snapmaker, not only with the 3D printing head, but with the laser and the CNC. Uh, but it all boils down to the fact that I do believe the software and the firmware on the Snapmaker and within Luban are not mature. That really lends to a little bit of a clunky user experience because there are just things that you think should work and they don't work or you think they should work this way and they work that way. I printed a torture toaster with the Snapmaker and I just had a whole host of issues. Due to the incredible bed adhesion, I broke the handles and was unable to move the toast after. After I broke the handle, I had to break the toast loose by hand and once I did that, the toast moved just fine. In terms of the clearance, I was able to move the 0.5 and the 0.4, but the 0.3, 0.2, and 0.1 will never move. If I ever try to make them move, I'm guaranteeing that will break something. And again, because of the bed adhesion issue, I have white discoloration all over the entire model. I was able to fix that by putting an interface layer down and I simply used Aquanet. If you don't know, Aquanet is just hairspray, but it adds a layer between the plastic and the build surface and it can do a few things. It can either increase adhesion or in this case, it will decrease adhesion. So I also printed some models from Flexi Factory because they're all cute, they're all fun, everyone loves them. And so I printed the Phoenix and I printed an elephant and I printed the Phoenix twice actually. The first time I printed it, I used a matte army green filament, which just did a terrible job. And that was weird to me because I've used that filament before and not had an issue. But so I printed the Phoenix again with a different filament and it turned out flawlessly. I then printed an elephant and once again, it looks fantastic. There's absolutely no issues anywhere to be seen. The quality is stellar. Later, I printed a planter just to see what it would look like. And it did a very, very good job with the planter as well. If you look at it closely, you can tell that it was 3D printed, but otherwise you would have absolutely no idea that it came off of a 3D printer. And I printed a Grim Reaper that had some skulls. I have never seen this model before, but I thought it was fun and I wanted to see what it was gonna turn out like. And it really turned out fantastic. Overall, minus a few hiccups here and there, a few software bugs here and there, the 3D printing module on the Snapmaker performed very, very well. As we move to the laser and the CNC module, I have significantly less experience. I have used both a laser and a CNC, but my knowledge is not as vast as with 3D printing, so everything I say here on out should be taken with a grain of salt, and hopefully I don't say anything too terribly wrong. The first thing I have to say about the laser module is a double-ended sword. You go and you do something, you stab one way, but it stabs you right back. And that's because the laser module is only 1.6 watts. That means you can't burn anything, but that also means you can't cut very many thick objects. I couldn't even cut standard thickness cardboard, you know, the Amazon box you get in the mail. I couldn't even cut that. I mean, if I wanted to go through seven passes, maybe it'll cut through, but it's just not worth trying to cut something like that. I would find it more worth my time to do an outline once or twice to get the cut mostly there and then come through with a pair of scissors if you want to cut cardboard. Of course, you'll be able to cut paper because it's so thin. So if you're a scrapbooker, cutting paper might just be one of the best use cases for the Snapmaker. One thing I found out that I was able to cut, which is incredible, is the black foam that comes in all the 3D printers. It's actually the foam that the Snapmaker is packaged 
packaged in. I was able to cut foam up to 28 millimeters thick. Now on that 28 millimeter thick edge, that got very, very thick and the back side of it wasn't a clean cut. I lost clean cut about at 15 to 20 millimeters thick. And one thing that I was very impressed with is while I was using the laser with the fan on that comes with the enclosure, I basically smelled nothing and I'm using the laser indoors. I found that the estimated times from Luban with the laser were very, very inaccurate. So it's best that you don't start a laser job, walk away for six hours. One of the first things that I tried to do I was told it was gonna take three hours and it was done in 45 minutes. I had a couple other jobs that Luban told me would take four to five hours and they were done within an hour and a half. Luban is very, very basic. Now for a beginner, Luban is probably the way to go. But if you ever wanna step up your skills and step up your capabilities, you're going to want to download Lightburn. One of the issues with Lightburn is that with Luban, you're allowed to take capabilities of the camera that is built into the laser module. Now this camera module is seriously, seriously cool. You just click get background and then Luban takes multiple pictures of what your build plate looks like and then it stitches all of them together and it allows you to see what you're burning. That allows you to choose the location of where you're burning as well. But if you use Lightburn, you do not have access to this functionality. You can, however, use Lightburn to export an SVG, and then you can import that SVG directly into Luban. But the issue is you can't overlay an SVG on top of your work surface. So once again, the camera just doesn't work in that case. And in my opinion, the camera is the best part of the laser module. One issue I came across regularly was actually collecting that background image. And I think that has something to do with a weak internet connection. When you would click the grab background button within Luban, the camera module moves to nine locations, takes a picture and then stitches all of them together. But in my experience, there were multiple times where the camera module would take multiple pictures and then freeze and not do anything. I don't really want to speculate too much on why this is happening, but I think, again, this boils down to some software issues, which makes me think that the Snapmaker and Luban are still not that mature. For a 1.6 watt laser, overall, I was very impressed with its capabilities. It has automatic calibration for the focus, and some people, actually most people will tell you this is not automatic calibration. They're just kind of hiding some stuff in the weeds, but the calibration was nice. The way it works is it burns a series of lines onto a piece of paper, it lifts itself up, and then the camera analyzes those lines and it does some math behind the scenes. For every subsequent use of the laser, Luban asks you for the thickness of your material, and then it uses the thickness of your material as an offset to the focal length that it calibrated at. This is nice, but it again causes some issues buried deep within the system where you might have the laser module collide with your workpiece if you improperly measure it. For the most part, I didn't have any issues with this, but it is something to be considered. In terms of the quality of the laser and the output that I received, I was very happy. Once again, this is a 1.6 watt laser, so you really can't expect too much but overall it was very nice. I laser cut my YouTube banner onto a piece of cardboard and I thought it was absolutely incredible. I also engraved my girlfriend's photograph onto a few pieces of thin wood and I'm now using them as coasters, but overall they look great. I think there's a little bit of tinkering with in order to get the settings right, but that's gonna happen with any laser that you use. I burned a picture of my cat sitting next to a board of Monopoly onto a solid piece of wood, and I had an issue on one side, but that has nothing to do with the laser, that's because the board itself was not flat. So it was thin on one side and thick on another side. So as the laser was going, it started to change its length with focus and it started to die off and the picture wasn't perfectly crisp. At this point, everything I had done so far was within Luban, so I wanted to try to do light burn. So I opened up light burn and I created a matrix of power levels with speeds. I exported that SVG file to G-code and then I imported that G-code into Luban and then I used Luban to send it to Snapmaker. I did that test burn on a piece of LVP as well as a solid block of wood just to get an idea for what it's capable of 
and it works. But the one thing that you have to understand is if you are importing G-code, you might have to do some math because you can't use that camera background. One of the biggest issues with the laser is with the silicone inserts, and this is something that was not fixed with that little T that they added. This is something that all the makers complained about and they did nothing. The silicone inserts are awful, they're useless, they don't help at all. If there is one tip I can give you guys, go to your local hardware store, get yourself a pack of rubber bands. Rubber bands have been very, very helpful for working with this machine. I was originally using the silicone spacers in order to stick my work pieces down, but it just doesn't work. Once I swapped to rubber bands, my pieces were coming out a lot better. Overall, I am not a laser expert. I very rarely use lasers, but I do enjoy them and I have my own laser, so I kind of understand the ropes. Nothing I've done here was post-processed or finished, so hopefully you can look past that in the final products, but I do believe that this 1.6 watt laser is very nice. Overall, I think it would be wise of Snapmaker to include the 10 watt laser with this package because you are very limited with the 1.6 watt laser. Moving on to the CNC functionality of the Snapmaker, this is where I do personally believe that the Snapmaker shines. The Snapmaker is equipped with an ER11 call it for its CNC machine, which means that it is readily available on Amazon at your local hardware store, at least in the United States. And if you live outside of the United States, I'm fairly confident you can very easily find this call it online. Now, I think it was a mistake for Snapmaker to only include two bits in the package because with two bits, there's very little you can do. Also, Luban now supports layering, so you can have Snapmaker do one layer with one bit to flatten a piece, and then you can go in with a V-carve bit to carve out some letters, and then you can go in with a different bit to take away more material, all on multiple different layers. Thankfully, because it's an ER11 call it, you can do what I did, and you can go on Amazon, and you can buy a whole package of bits. Now, I believe this is a 15-bit package and it just plugs directly into my 8th inch ER11 collet. Upon my first bit install and spin up of the collet, I completely and entirely destroyed that bit. I homed it directly into the build plate and shot that bit way into next year and I was frightened to death because I was trying to film a video clip and I didn't have my glasses on because I wasn't expecting a piece of metal to go flying across the room. So guys, be very, very careful and always use your safety glasses even when you don't think you need to. So the way that you use the CNC machine is you simply measure the thickness of your material, you clamp the material down, you tell Luban whether you want to cut material or trace material, you tell it what you want the plunge depth to be, Pretty much is the same as any other CNC software. In my experience, I would first flatten a board with about 0.7 or 0.8 millimeters thick. Once I knew it was flat, on the next layer, I would actually go and cut or carve what I wanted to. Now this workflow worked really well for me because I wasn't working with perfectly flat pieces. If you are working with perfectly flat pieces, then you might not need to do that. The good news is Luban allows you to use layers now, which it previously didn't, so that is functionality that you do have available. Like with the laser when you're importing G-code, you must do math. You have no idea where the milling is gonna take place unless you do math to figure that out. You can outline your work zone, but once you've already clamped your material down, you're not gonna want to unclamp your material and move it just because your work zone was changed. So the easiest thing to do is for you to clamp your piece down and then do math in order to figure out exactly where you need to do the milling. The way I did this is I simply took my calipers and I measured tick marks on the plate and from there you could just maneuver your work zone within Luban. Now this machine is not a speed demon so please do not expect it to be. It is running screws in the Y axis and the X axis and the Z axis and I'm pretty sure this is in order for rigidity so when you're milling components that you're not gonna have an issue, but that also means it's going to be slower. In my experience, I milled solid wood and I milled LVP. Both of them milled very well and I have no 
issues whatsoever with the output quality. That being said, I was using a bit that came included with the Snapmaker. It was the only bit that I had while I was testing the machine and it does leave a rough cut. So if you want things to come off of the Snapmaker and look beautiful, you're going to have to do some post-processing. In this video, I had absolutely no time to do the post-processing, but from what I can tell, what came off of the Snapmaker is very, very nice for a DIY machine. And if I wanted to bust out the sander, I could make these pieces look absolutely fantastic. I did try to make a little coaster for the video, with a wooden exterior and an LVP insert, but I had an issue. The LVP insert doesn't fit within the coaster wooden exterior. For the sake of this video, I'll just show you the pieces that were cut, even though they don't fit. And of course, once again, they are rough cut and they could be better if I had time to actually do post-processing to sand them and to put oil on them. Overall, the CNC capability with this machine is without a doubt the biggest reason why I will be keeping this machine inside and I will be using it because the CNC capability of this machine is very, very good. Now that I've purchased third party bits that are higher quality, the parts that come directly off of the machine are going to look better. They're going to have more detail. I am very, very excited to see what I can pull out of this machine with the CNC. But there is one thing that I must alert you guys of and that is this CNC machine like any other CNC machine, it throws material everywhere. You will not get away from that. And if you ever have any desire to use this CNC machine inside and you do not get the enclosure, you are going to have a very, very bad day. Overall, like I've mentioned a few times, I'm very happy with this machine and I do intend to keep it in the studio at least for a short time before it maybe moves out to the garage. But I do like it there are a whole bunch of signs that tell me that this Snapmaker is still in a child stage. It is very, very immature in its software. It has a lot of work to be done. And for that reason, I don't know if it's worth the price that they're commanding. This machine is very, very high quality. Everything on the machine looks nice. It feels nice. The screen is nice they've done a better job than any other manufacturer has in terms of giving you a high quality product. It's clear and it's evident that the Snapmaker team cares about what they're selling you and it's clear and it's evident that the Snapmaker team wants their users to be happy. Just in the time that I've owned this machine, as I mentioned before, I've had multiple updates, which makes me think that there's going to be more updates in the future. I've had a few issues with this machine and the company has been very responsive and willing to help me with them. One of the biggest problems that I foresee with this this machine is swapping from one module to the next. If you have any intentions of swapping from one module from one day to the next day to the next day, you're probably going to be very disappointed. The Snapmaker prides itself on being hot swappable, but it really is a 10 to 20 minute experience. And if you have the enclosure, it actually is probably a 15 to 25 minute experience because there's very little room. Working within the enclosure is very difficult. So if you're trying to screw stuff in, it's just going to add extra time. When you're swapping from one module to the next, not only do you have to swap out the tool head, but you also have to swap out the build plate. And as many other makers have said, unscrewing the 15 to 20 screws and screwing 15 to 20 new screws in is very, very frustrating. There's no way around it and you just have to do it. Another issue that I foresee with this machine is if you do use the CNC head and then you choose to go to the 3D printing head and if you have the enclosure, you're gonna have to do a full scrub down of the inside of the enclosure because I know I would not 3D print in an enclosure that is full of dust, that is bound to have problems. Dust will fall and it will settle on your 3D print and you're gonna have bad layer adhesion. You might have issues with the quality of the exterior skin of your 3D prints. It's just not something that I would be interested in doing. So keep that in mind. As I previously mentioned, this Snapmaker does have a clientele that it caters to. It caters to someone that wants a high quality machine has the money to purchase it, but doesn't necessarily have the space to house individual machines. Maybe the Snapmaker caters to you in some different scenario that I don't quite know, but 
in either case, the Snapmaker is worth it in certain situations. Is it worth it in all situations? Probably not. If you only want a 3D printer and a laser, you're probably better off buying a laser and a 3D printer separately. If you want a laser and a CNC machine, but you don't really care about the 3D printer, this might be an option for you because then you can use the 3D printer if you want. Of course, I don't have all the cases in which this is worth it, so you're gonna have to make your own decision, but I do like the Snapmaker that I have here and I will be keeping it for a while, so you will see it more on the channel.